I'm Bob Hallmark in Harrison County today, and there's a good reason for it. Over the past few weeks, we have had torrential rains, storms, tornadoes, everything you can imagine, and that includes flooded roads. Now, while linemen have been out trying to restore power to thousands of people in East Texas that have been without uh, some for several days, uh, there have also been problems with flooded roads and people trying to pass through those flooded roads. And nobody has had more experience at water rescues right now than Harrison County. And to talk a little bit about that, we're joined now by Harrison County Fire Marshal James uh, McConnell. And uh, James, I guess uh, it's fair to say you've been busy over the last week or so, is that right? Uh, our office and uh, our emergency districts, our volunteer firemen have been very busy over this last bell of rains. Um, people have decided that uh, they will chance driving through this water to save a few minutes of time instead of backing up and turning around. Mm -hmm. And that has led to almost a half a dozen high water rescues. Um, they use a military grade truck that they've got uh, from the, a grant from the Forestry Service and mm -hmm. bought it through military surplus. So they use those vehicles to go out and rescue these folks that have decided to take the chance and drive through these waters. Now what uh, we're gonna show you right now is a little video here of some of these rescues that have gone on. And these are different departments, obviously. Uh, these are various departments that have been called out uh, for water rescue. Correct, correct. Right. We've got nine different districts that, uh, that work the Harrison County area. Um, I think there was uh, half of those have these high water rescue vehicles. Now, one of the frightening situations here uh, that uh, James is gonna tell us about is one of them involved a, uh, a vehicle that was teetering on the edge of some fast moving water. And you said that there were some children involved in this. Correct. So one of the incidents involved a minivan. Uh, the area there that they were in was in a valley. So the water kind of converged on that one specific point. Uh, the chief of that district uh, might have commented that it was the fastest uh, moving water that he's experienced so far this year. Mm -hmm. um, the minivan, of course, stalled out in the middle of this. Um, it had been pushed apparently to the edge, uh, what it appeared to you on video and what they described. The, um, it also had uh, three young children in the car. So mm -hmm. it turned out well, but it could have been very tragic for a lot of folks. Yeah, as uh, we're going to show you that video, uh, you can take a look at this. Uh, you see how close the uh, uh, the, unit, the fire unit is to uh, where uh, the vehicle is, and that's, that was for a reason. They needed to get close, right? Yes. Uh, being how there's a small kid involved, and mm -hmm. you want to limit your travel distance through the water, so they backed the vehicle up to the driver's side area of the, of the vehicle, the van, mm -hmm. and they were able to basically get them out of the side of the, the side door right up onto the truck without having to spend a lot of time in the water itself. Gotcha. Now, if you look at some of this video, you'll see that there's, uh, in some cases, several feet of water that is running over the roadways here. So obviously the danger here, you'll notice everybody is wearing a life jacket, and that's for a good reason as well, uh, because you say you might think you're okay getting out and walking, but that might not be true. Uh, you never know what's underneath there. If you get out and walk without some type of uh, personal protection, life jacket, uh, if your feet, you lose your footing, and fall in that water, you could be swept away in a matter of minutes or seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so we take the precautions. We put uh, a life jacket on the volunteer or the fireman that's going out to doing the rescue. They also carry, uh, carry life jackets with them, give them to the people that they're getting out of the car. And uh, our volunteer is also tethered to the equipment. That way if he does slip, mm -hmm. we can reel him back in. Gotcha. And, and if they've got a hold of the person they're rescuing, we can pull them back in together. Now, uh, fortunately, I'm guessing everybody is safe out of all these instances. Yes, everybody, here. everything's worked out well. Okay. Uh, now, the big thing here is uh, over the decades, uh, the public has had warnings about not doing this. Don't try to pass this. You have some advice for people. I mean, if you're trying to save time, this is not the way to do it. Yeah, you're, you're risking your life. You're risking the life of your passengers if you have somebody in there. Uh, and also, you're putting our volunteers at risk. And not just that, it's, I mean, when you flood your car out, I mean, now you've got to buy a new engine or a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of points to not go in just to save a few minutes of driving. Turn around, find another route, play it safe. Don't take the chances. Your life's not worth it.
There we go. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. And we'll have more on this story tonight on KLTV 7 News for KLTV Web Extra. I'm Bob Hallmark.